Hi everyone, my name is Scott Rose, PGA Professional and Ambassador for the Force Pedal. And today I wanted to put together a little video to show you some of the ways in which I use the Force Pedal in my lessons. We all know the Force Pedal is a really great training aid to increase things like ground reaction forces and club head speed, but I found it's a great way in order to help my students keep the club on plane and stop that dreaded shank shot. So, as we all know, the shank is easily the most destructive shot in golf. It happens to us at any level and can happen, unfortunately, at any time. There's two different ways in which we can hit a shank. So, the club can drop too much from the inside and we can hit a shank that way. Or from the top of the swing, the club can travel too much from over the top. The club path becomes too much out to in and the contact point goes away from the sweet spot and comes closer to the hosel. Now, I would like to talk about how the force pedal can help fix the second way to hit a shank. So that's the club coming from over the top. What I noticed a lot using force and pressure data that when I see people that hit a shank from over the top, a lot of their pressure seems to be on both toes. As a result of that, they tend to lose their posture, so they stand up, they come out of their spine angle, and also their hips thrust forward. So we call that an early extension. So I'm thinking to myself, how can I stop my player from loading into his toes, early extending, and losing his spine angle? And in comes the force pedal. Now as we all know through either getting lessons or giving lessons, we can't just give the diagnosis and expect the player to go and do it. So the first thing that we do is we create the correct feeling. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the force pedals, we're going to take the yellow one, we're going to put it so that it's able to go underneath the left toe, and we're going to take the orange force pedal and put it underneath the right heel. From here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get my students to feel where I want their pressure or weight to shift throughout the swing. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take the club, we're going to pop it across the player's shoulders, and all I'm going to ask them to do is turn into the right heel and point the grip to the ground. What that does is it helps to load into the right side. The right hip can go back rather than early extending forward. And the player is able to hold his spine angle. So we're able to just turn around that point. Rather than early extending and standing up. From there, the club's going to travel over the top. Whereas from here, as we turn, we rotate and the club's got a better chance of staying on plane and hitting the middle of the club rather than the hosel. Now it would be at this point in which I would add a secondary uh, feeling or uh, object for the, the player to use in this drill, which is another reason why I love using the force pedal. The portable, they can go anywhere and you can use it with any other training aid. Mine's is really simple and you can get it anywhere. So as you can see, what I've added in is a gym ball and any chair. And what that's going to do there is that's going to create on the force pedals an object for the student to feel. So he's going to feel that gym ball against his backside there and we're just going to try and stay on that point. We're not going to early extend, we'll lose our spine angle and rise up because that's when the club wants to come over the top and that's going to equal shanks. So from here we're just going to load into the, from the, from the left toe into the right heel using the force pedal, we're going to stay back on the ball and we're going to swing through. From there we're going to maintain the angle and the club can drop down. So we've done the easy bit. We've looked at the video, we've looked at the data, and we've realized what's causing us to lose our spine angle, early extend, and for the club to throw over the top, and we're gonna stop the ball going 90 degrees right. We've created a feeling with using the force pedal and our secondary training aid there. Now's the hard bit, put it into practice. Got our force pedals in position, left toe to right heel. I know the feeling that I'm trying to create this feeling here rather than this feeling here and I know the path in which I want the club to travel down. Let's see if it works. Definitely wasn't a shank. So, as I said, force pedal, amazing training aid and help them with ground reaction forces, club head speed. And I use that a lot with my students, but I also use it in the context of helping us to control the movements of our body. My name's Scott Rose. You can follow me on Instagram at Scott Rose Golf, Twitter Scott Rose Golf, or on Facebook at Scott Rose Golf. 
Thanks.